worship our Father. Okay. Okay. There's something God is telling me. Anybody in this third service that is experiencing late arrival, that is, as you just came, they say, oh, it's now they just gave out the contract. It's now. They just employ somebody. If you had come yesterday, if you had come, just let arrive. What is the meaning of that? Let arrive. You are not always there on time. On time. The blessing is there for you, but it, there's a force that will delay you to arrive late. And then what is meant to you is given to somebody else. But lift up your hands. That spirit of late arrival is arrested. It's arrested. Somebody shot fire. At the top of your voice, shot fire. Shot fire. Shot fire. Shot fire. Shot fire. <laughs> Say after me, Father, I refuse to arrive late. What is mine shall not be given to someone else. Put your hands together as a prayer prayer. Lekoto zuga broke sete gedush. What is mine shall not be given to someone else. What is mine shall not be given to someone else. Lekoto to zuta yagadush. Let arrive, let arrive. You didn't come yesterday, you would have gotten it. You didn't come at the beginning of the night, you would have gotten it. But right now, every spirit of late arrival, every spirit of late arrival, we set that spirit on fire. Shika parege te shukatash. In Jesus, precious name we have prayed. Can I pray for everyone in this third service? You will be there on time. And anything that is yours, you will meet it. Amen. Anything that is to be given to you shall not be given to someone else. Amen. Every spirit that makes you arrive late to miss what is yours, that spirit is hereby arrested forever. Arrested forever. Arrested forever. Arrested forever. Arrested forever. If the spirit is following you, making you to drag feet so that you don't get it, I command that spirit to expire from your life now and forever. In Jesus' name. Our God is too good. We judge him to be a faithful God. Give the Lord a clap as you take your seat. I want to welcome everyone to this third service. All our online worshippers from wherever you are watching us from, we recognize your presence. And please, from that country, can you shout hallelujah for us to hear? We are not hearing you. <laughs> hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 11 and in verse that Proverbs chapter 11 and in verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. He that winneth soul is wise. So winning of soul is wisdom. Father, as I speak your word from this altar, baptize somebody with the spirit of arriving on time. As I speak your word from this altar, let somebody get there at the right time. That is, they will tell us, you, you came at the right time, take it. Let that spirit follow you this week. In Jesus' precious name, let me hear your loudest amen. So our moment of evangelism, the subject is why you should be a soul winner. This is part three. Why you should be a soul winner. The word salvation comes from a Greek word, soteria. Soto, soteria. Eh? Soteria. Okay. Right? Which means the act of delivering from sin. The act of delivering from evil. The act 
of delivery from sin, from evil. Please note that God places a very great value on man because it is only man that looks like him. That's why God places great value on man. It is only you that looks like him. Let us make man in our own image and likeness. That is why he places so much value on you. And he wants to use you to reach the lost. He wants to use you to depopulate the number of people on their way to hell. He wants to use you. Won't you make yourself available? Why you should be a soul winner. So we are looking at four reasons why you should be a soul winner. Four reasons. Number one, to avoid a murder charge. Murder. Murder. M-U-R-D-E-R. Murder charge. To avoid a murder charge. Ezekiel 3, 17 to 18. That is why you should be a soul winner. Ezekiel chapter 3, 17 to 18. Ezekiel chapter 3, 17 to 18. Ezekiel chapter 3, 17. To, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman. Son of man. Son of man. So maybe a, lady, a sister is saying that, thank God they say son. All right, daughter of man. <laughs> I have made thee a watchman unto the house Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Verse 18. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. And thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way. To save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood. It's a serious matter. But his blood will I require at thy hand. A mother charge. So when you see somebody that is living his life contrary to the way God wants him to live his life, God expects you as a watchman, as a watchwoman that he has set on the earth to tell the person this is not the way, this is the way. Otherwise, he says, if that person die, he's going to request his blood at thy hand. So, your own is to tell them that this is not what God wants you to do. Jesus came simply to suffer because of this thing you are doing. You can't continue doing this. Number two, a preacher is needed. That's why you must be a soul winner. A preacher is needed. God sent Jesus to reconcile the world to himself through, through Jesus. God sent Jesus to reconcile the world to himself. To himself. God sent Jesus to reconcile the world to God. Through his son, Jesus. And has committed the ministry of reconciliation to every believer. He has committed the ministry of reconciliation to every believer. So, every believer is supposed to be a minister of reconciliation. Every believer is supposed to preach, is supposed to proclaim reconciliation ministry. Every believer is supposed to be a preacher that is actively working for God in the reconciliation ministry. Romans chapter 10, verse 14. Romans chapter 10, verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without what? Without a preacher. There are some of you that came to Banner of Life because you heard, heard it from somebody. Somebody told you about the church. Some of us here. And that's why we are here. He said, how shall they hear without a preacher? See, in the company 
you live, you are meant to be a preacher there. In your business center, you are meant to be a preacher. In your family, you are meant to be a preacher. How shall they hear without a preacher? May we walk for God in Jesus' name. May we be effective in the ministry of reconciliation in the name of Jesus. Number three, reason why you should be a soul winner. The right time is now. Now is our salvation nearer than when we first believe. The right time is now. The right time is now. John chapter 4 verse 35. John 4 35. Say not ye, there are yet, there are yet four months and then come at harvest. Behold, I said unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the feet for they are white already to what? To harvest. Already. The harvest is ripe. This is the right time for us to gather in the harvest. This is the right time. Today is already late. It's already late. Not to talk of tomorrow. Today is already late. There's somebody. If you don't tell the person about Christ today, you may hear that he has died tomorrow. Huh? Ah, you mean that brother, that sister? That brother, that sister? I greeted him yesterday. Oh. See, these days, people don't die because they are sick. Is that correct? Oh. Somebody, hey, Lanati, you will just hear that the person has died. But you will never die that kind of death. That amen is not correct. You will not die before your time in the name of Jesus. That's why. That the anointer said, uh, somebody in their fellowship when they were in school, all of a sudden just left the fellowship, disconnected from fellowship, and started going out with his sister, be engaged in immorality. And he came and said, Brother, brother, remember, remember, we are together. What is this? Stop it. Say, Leave me alone. No, I can't leave you alone. Please, no, this is not, this is against the will of God. Say, No. He said, please leave me. Don't disturb me. I have chosen to do what I want to do. Leave me. And then he went ahead and said, for your information, even though there is hell, I don't mind going there. What? Even though there is hell, you don't mind going there. That is said they went for a program. By the time they came back, he said the first news he received was the death of that brother. That one sickness came away, he vomited, kept vomiting, vomiting, from, and he died. What? The brother that just told me that even though there is hell, I don't mind going there. Let's take a seat. Inside Keke, it is time to tell somebody about Christ. That's your friend. It is time to tell him, to tell her about Christ. You can't be a believer, your mother is not born again. Your father is not born again. And you are comfortable. Your brothers and sisters. You have not been able to sit anybody down and say, this is not life. No, not one person. No, not one person that I didn't affect in my, in my family. My father, my mother. They were staunch Catholic. They have never been to any Pentecostal church. Mostly my dad. Never in his life. You know there are Catholic people. They have never. Some of them, they pass here, they used to do like this. In front here. I don't know what, I don't, I don't know the name. Uh, eh? Okay, they are not part of this place. Huh? Okay, altar of God. Uh, okay, thank you. Separately, if I'm praying there as they reach here, they just do like this. <laughs> Praise God. Can I hear your loudest? Amen. Amen. Everybody received the fire. Then I caught, caught the fire. As a little boy, GSS 2. GSS 2. Fire entered my home. Entered my home. You are laughing in church. Your mother is not born again. You can't sit, mama. Mama, you are closer to your grave now. Let me lead you to Christ. Praise God. 
I say, praise God. Heaven and hell are real. That is why you must be a soul winner. Heaven and hell are real. Luke chapter 16, 24 to 25. Heaven and hell are real. Don't look at it as story. Oh. Story, story, story. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. Yes. And Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. But go home and read the rest. Alright? He was even asking, I think he was even asking that they should allow him to go to the earth and tell his brothers and sisters that this hellfire is what? It's real. And he got an answer that there are pastors over there. There are prophets over there. There are apostles over there. He said, no sir, they will not hear them. He said, if they don't hear them, they will meet you here. Heaven is real. Hell is real. Somebody was dying. Very close to me. I prayed, I prayed. And I saw the person going. I prayed, I prayed. But the person was still going. And then all of a sudden, the person started shedding tears. But at that point, he was no longer conscious. That is, my mommy should know who I'm talking about. He was going. Tears. God told me that that is the tears of hellfire. Tears of hell. Torment for life. Crying seriously, but he's not conscious. Or he wasn't conscious. The word, the word is waiting for you because you are God's mouthpiece. You are, you are God's mouth. It, it is it's illegal for spirits to start preaching to people. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Spirits start preaching. That is why you are a spirit, but God, God put you in a cage, in a case called body. Right? So that you can reach out to people. Spirits are not meant to preach. It's you. Even though you are a spirit, he put you in a body. Jesus came down, he became flesh. He dwelt amongst us as flesh to reach men. Go and tell them. Go and tell them. That Jesus died for sinful world. Go and tell them. Go and tell them. He is coming back again. That is the end of that message. But this is important as we lay the foundation. The Lord said between October 1st and the 31st of December, 21 million years shall be raised. I like them to shout that amen. I want to ask you a question. Can God give you money between October and December? Can God make you a billionaire between October and December? Shout that yes, let God feel it. He can. He can. He can. When God told me that, God said, I'm going to give you money through connection. I will give your people money through connection. Connection. You don't get money because you are working harder than everybody. One connection. One connection. Only one. The money that comes from God, you don't struggle for it. The ones who will they struggle, you know they get out. The ones from God, you don't struggle. One connection. One connection. 21. Last night, I told them, me and mommy were praying here by 12 midnight last night. Or that's, yes, last night. 12 midnight. And while we were praying outside, God spoke to me. He said in this season, before the year ends, he said, 21 of your people, this is going to be their song. I said, 21 again? I didn't know. You will favor me this way. Hey, I didn't know. Favor me this way. Favor me this way. 
31 people. And, and, and see, I am telling you, that is by, by 31st of December, you will know you are a millionaire. Yeah. Only God knows the car we are going to dedicate this year. Yeah. The number of cars. From October 1st, people are thanking God for the cars they have bought. From, from October 1st, people are writing check as envelope. I mean offering. They say offering time, you bring out your checkbook. Okay, you can't bring out your checkbook and write a write check of 100 naira. Uh, who are you giving that to work to? <laughs> Even the transport to bank is how much? <laughs> right? You issued a check in favor of Banner of Life Bible Church. 50,000 signage offering. 10,000 signage offering. 5,000. See, if you want to change your level, it doesn't happen by chance. It happens by choice. People don't succeed by accident. Take your seat. So 12 pillars of kingdom prosperity. I, I, I'm, I'm just laying foundation so that everybody, because from October 1, it shall be blast. From that convention, blast all through to December. What number one is dedication. I'm speaking to only 21 persons, please. Dedication. Dedication. Psalm 92, 13 to 14. Psalm 92, 13 to 14. Psalm 92, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish. Verse 14. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. And they shall be fat. Flat. Those that be planted. Remain somewhere and labor for God. You don't find trees moving up and down. Say, you saw a tree here today. Say, where is that tree? They say the tree has gone to another place. <laughs> Dedication. Dedication. Number two, consecration. Consecration. You need to eschew evil like Job. Iniquity is a destroyer of prosperity. Where are, are the 21 people still here? Iniquity, fornication, adultery, murder, lasciviousness, hatred, malice, sedition, heresy, clubbing. Consecration. Consecration. Number three, financial integrity. Financial integrity, please hear me. You don't love money to get money. You love God to get money. People that love money don't get money. You love God. Don't falsify receipts. If you buy something for 500, say it's 500. A better name is better than riches. Or a good name, put it that way, is better than what? Riches. Riches. Can you be upright and make it? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Corruption should not be mentioned of a child of God that wants God's prosperity. Corruption. 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 I don't know whether you have heard one advert. I think on FM, you say, My name is corruption. How many of you have heard that advert? My name is corruption. Financial integrity. You are sincere. I bought this handkerchief from Abba, 15 naira. Oga, I'm in 16 naira. I want to sell it. Don't say you bought it 100 naira between God and man. Give him. That's number four. Give him. If you want financial miracle, do whatsoever he tells you to do. Very simple. I'll be coming with details as we get into the month of October. Give him. If you are not a tighter, you are not among the 21 persons. Do whatsoever he said to you to do. Do it. Do it. Number five is working. 
It is walking that helps you to take delivery of the blessing. Walking. Walking helps you to take delivery of the blessing. Walking. 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 From October 1st, you will walk the way you have never walked before. There's nothing wrong in you going to your shop by 7 a.m. Sit down there and pray for one hour. Do mental work. Write out your schedules. Those you need to call. Those you need to go visit. And there's nothing wrong except you have service. There's nothing that stops you from walking till nine. Till eight. Walking. 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 Number what? Number six. Thinking. You must first be a thinker before you end up as a prosperer. Please, if there's any English like that. Uh, but I think he's flowing. <laughs> you, you must first be a thinker before you end up as what? A prosperer. Think. Plenty of people don't think. Oh. If at all they think, what they are thinking is, which can life be this? Is it not better I even die? Man, no die. Man, no rotten. There are, there are syllables to think. Where, where, where God told us the things to think. To think. Sit down. Sit down. Why am I in this life? Why am I in this life? The people that are succeeding, are they better than me? Do they have two heads or seven heads? Why is my situation like this? Think, the middle of the night. I told them, I think, whether in the second service, I say, from October, there are times I will give, will give, say this week, everybody must wake up by 1 a.m. to think for 30 minutes. With your Bible and daughter. Sleep, 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 sleep. You don't need wood. Take your seat. Number seven, trust him. Trust him. That money in your bank account, that money in your pocket cannot sustain your future. It cannot take care of your future. Only God can sustain you. There's one song that is sang. I don't know what I... And they that trust in me can never be put to shame. Something like that. Huh? You, you, you know the song? Okay. Trust. Trust! 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 Every time, <laughs> cross your leg. <laughs> Ten million. Ten million. Ten million. No. Money has wings, though. Money can fly away. Don't trust your money. Trust God. Is God speaking to anybody here? And then number eight is waiting. The reason why so many people are wasting is because they are not waiting. 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 You have a due season calendar with God. Once that due season comes, God will not deny you of it. Help me tell somebody, wait. Tell somebody else, wait. Tell the person, if you are not patient, you will end up as a patient. I don't know how they say patience in your language, but tell somebody, please be patient. Tell somebody, patience. Lotule. Lotule. Your turn is coming. That amen is not correct. Your turn is coming. And it is my prayer that when it is your season, you will not miss your season. That's another thing. Because if you miss your season, it's another wahala. We're going to be looking at all that later this year. And uh, number what? Number nine, talking. You don't talk poor and expect riches. Talking. Talking. I don't mean talk 
talking and bragging. You know, I, I don't mean, you know, there's some talk that is bragging. <laughs> but I have one brother in law. Hey, if you hear him have attention, we catch him. <laughs> and he doesn't have anything. Hey! He said, he said, this one, where would they talk now? We are talking about 500 billion. Look, look, no, be smart, you know. 500 billion. From where? I look at it. 500 billion. You know what is B? I'm, I'm not talking about black. I'm talking about speaking your future. Praise God. Speaking your future. I am not a failure and I cannot be a failure. This life, before I leave, this earth will remember me. They will know that somebody like me passed through this earth. I will succeed. I will succeed. I will. Su I'm a success. In spite of what is happening, talk positively. You are going somewhere. Let me hear your loudest amen. Number. Number ten. Thanking. Thanking. Please note that every time you are cast down, you can't you can get up. Every time you are cast down, you can't get up. So tell yourself, I won't be down. I won't go down. I won't go down. I won't go down. I think I also tell, told them that, uh, uh, that every day people should... I've forgotten what I said. Yes. That is from October 1st. 21 times every day you wake up. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 21 times. Hallelujah. <laughs> October is a thank you, Lord. Oh, we make it like this. October is how many days? 30 days. So, huh? 31. So, October 1st, you say thank you for 31 times. October 2nd, you say thank you for. 30 times. That's the remaining days. Huh? You, you understand what I'm talking about? The remaining days of the month. Thank you 21 times. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See, nothing finishes in the hands of tankers. Nothing is permitted to finish. Everything multiplies if you know how to thank God. So to be thankless is to be fruitless. And to be thankful is to be fruitful. You are blessed. Amen. Number 11, responsibility to your parents. I don't care how much is your income. You have a duty towards your parents. I don't care. Pastor, my income per month is 10,000. You have a duty towards your parents. Out of that 10,000, make provision for your parents. <laughs> make provision for your parents. But he didn't help me. He didn't train me in school. And so what? But God has helped you. You can't separate your father, your mother from your prosperity. From your sources in life. You can't separate them. And number 12, responsibility to your family. Responsibility to your family. You must be concerned about your wife and children's welfare. I'm talking to men. Because the matter of, of responsibility, as far as family is concerned, rests squarely on the man. You don't, you don't tell your wife to be part of it. If she decides to help, praise God. But you don't tell your wife that what is your contribution this month. Is it uh, this thing you are doing? What do they do that? What, what do they do? do huh? Ada, is it Adache you are doing? Say, 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 I'll bring 10,000. So what is your contribution? No. If she decides to help, praise God. If she says she won't help you, praise God. That is why if you are not ready for responsibility, don't marry. Marriage is responsibility. Marriage is responsibility. If you see anywhere you see wife and children, my expenses you see. 
हेलो Don't cry because your wife is making demands. She is an expenses. Children, there was one day I nearly cried over me. Ha! David entered my office money. As he was going out, and he came money. As he was going out, and he came again money. I said, "What is the problem?" I, I nearly said, "Go and meet your mom." And I said, "No, I'm a pastor." <laughs> <laughs> Can I hear your loudest amen? <laughs> Responsibility. Responsibility. So you must take care of your home. You must take care. It may be little, but let your wife confirm that my husband is what? Try. There are some men, little money they are still carrying women. There is no girl you will carry that you won't spend money. Eh? Say, no, pastor, the guy just loved me. Now lie. Now lie. <laughs> Say, she just loved me like, now lie. Big lie, big fat lie. <laughs> Somebody's angry with me, dear. <laughs> two ways, two ways to show that a man loves his wife. Two ways. Number one, by honoring stroke, helping her parents. Men, please note this. Women don't play with their parents. Hello? <laughs> you can insult your wife, but don't insult the parents. Even you as a man, your wife can insult you, but the day we insult your father or mother, I father and my mother. <laughs> if you are marrying any woman, you are also marrying the mother. Men, are you hearing me? <laughs> you can't be taking care of your wife alone, leaving, the, uh, leaving, leaving your mother alone. There are men, Christmas time, they will send something to their parents. But to the to the illness. No. no. If you love your wife, you will remember her parents. Praise God. You will honor them. You will honor them. You will honor them. Kai, you know, death is very wicked. Otherwise, my mother in law, what she suffered for me, that time we just started ministry. What she suffered, how I wish she's still alive. Wish she's still alive. That, 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 that time, in fact, when I was working, that time, she was like literally living with us, and I was very happy. Very happy. Say, so, well, this is your mother, you don't reach two weeks old. So. What did she still do here? <laughs> Number two, by helping her domestically when the need arises. It's not your duty, but because of love, you can carry broom and sweep the house. It's not your duty. Don't misquote me. That is, she is not fit to do it. You can wash plates. You can wash her clothes. Where is that girl? Have I washed your clothes before? Huh? Answer now. <laughs> Have I washed plates before? Have I cooked for all of you? That is, you went to war before you came back. I cook and, you know, yes. As they came, I said, sit down. I enter kitchen serving food. The, uh, me. Now, hear this. Your wife is your wife. She's not your slave. I, are you following what I'm saying here? She's not your slave. Don't kill somebody's daughter in the name of marriage. <laughs> Please, she's, she's your wife. She's your wife. Women are trying. Some, we, we have one in the hand, one at the back. They are cooking. They are answering food. That is why most women don't answer food. I don't know whether your wife, but at times, mommy, now she's picking up because the children are growing. You will call, call. Phone is in the bedroom. She's in the kitchen. Hi, God. 
<laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. What, what women go through. Look at pregnancy. There are some of you here looking at me, the men. If to say God will allow you to carry pregnancy for once, it will not reach nine months. You say, Doctor, I better remove this thing. <laughs> remove this thing, please. What is this? It will not be up to nine months. And that is why women, please also understand that men don't play with their mother. There's one kind of unusual attachment between a man and his mother. Praise God. I say praise God. So, so, so when you when you find out that it is it, not too well with your wife, see how you can help her. See how you can help her. How many of you are aware that there are some men? Once the wife delivers, they will change room. Huh? <laughs> they used to sleep in the same, but the arrival of a child, they will change room. Why? They don't want a uh, nice. I didn't change room. That's why I beat one of them. Eh? Yes. David, see him inside the cage. I think it was less than what are three months or four months ago. Darling. Huh? Three or four months. Yeah! Yeah! Throughout the night. Baby, it's okay. Yeah! As if he was hearing me. I said, it's okay. <laughs> Allows to sleep, you say, we'll sleep. <laughs> Honestly, but a mother will not do that. No, I gave it back, and the, the crisis <laughs> maybe the shock, the shock, bam, who we'll stop. Shout hallelujah. Two ways as we conclude to show that a woman is submissive to her husband. Okay. Women, they have challenge with submission. Two ways to show that a woman is a submissive woman. Number one, before you go or do anything, your husband should be informed. That is a sign of submission. You don't carry your bag and just walk out. No. You don't have that right. You must call your husband and, and, tell, her, and tell him, this is where I am what? Or you are building a house for your parents and your husband is not aware. Because God has blessed you more than your husband. It's a sign of lack of submission. It's a sign of lack of submission. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. I want to send money to my parents. Please, sir, say that she let you know. But there are some men I'm aware. If you tell them, they will tell you. What did they happen? Say, who die? No, no, you shouldn't do that. If you are doing that to her, you are making her to coin into her share. So, you, uh, uh, every submissive woman, you don't do anything without your husband being aware. You don't do anything without your husband being aware. One woman in this church wanted to buy a land. She wanted to buy a land and she mentioned to her husband and then the husband said, no, you can't buy that land. That canoe is not settled. Canoe is not settled. And she said, ah, canoe is not settled but we are, you are here doing business. We are still here. What the man wants is that money. I think about five point something million. That money she wants to build, buy that land at Panisup. The, the woman should give should give him the money to put in his business. The woman said, Pastor, I don't want to, I don't want to buy this land without my husband being out. I've told him and he's, I can buy the land and he's not aware. I said, no, don't do that. You have told him. Can you, is, is, does he have a brother in this town? Say yes, it's okay. Say, okay, Pastor. Yes, go and talk to his brother. Is, is, see the junior senior. Say senior. Good. Go and meet his brother. Talk to his brother that this is what I feel we should do. 
and let his brother speak to him. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen. Yes. That is a submissive wife. She is doing far, far better than the husband. She, in fact, she, she's a distributor. She will bring, get goods and give to the husband. But she was still able to tell the husband that, please, sir, I want us to buy a land and permit you. There are, there are women, they have personal accounts and their husbands are not aware. Take your seat. Everywhere is quiet. <laughs> Second sign of submission. By not talking back at your husband. What is wrong with you? You do what is wrong with you. What is wrong with you? My two plus two. <laughs> that is showing the man that I'm ready for you. What is wrong with you? Look, I came home since 30 minutes. 30 minutes now. I'm expecting you to give me. He said, You know, get eyes. You know, you know, she said, You come, you meet me, the busy. Just leave me alone. If you know they succeed, go look for where your problem is. There are women, if you hear their mouth, you can die before your time. You can, you can, you can type of it. Mommy knows one Elijah, Elijah one. He said, well, I pastor. See if, he's if I'm talking to my wife, she doesn't answer. Then after a while, I will ask myself, say, why am I talking alone? He said, he will not tell himself that, ah, I'm talking alone. Because he will be talking, talking. But the woman will keep quiet. Submission. Women, to keep quiet. You talk one, before you talk one, they have spoken three. And they are waiting. Oh, oh, there's always answer. Already made answer, waiting for discharge. <laughs> Please, men, if you don't want to raise hand at your wife, learn to step out if issue comes up. Just that's one second, two seconds that you step out, it has saved a lot of situation. Because if you wait and she's talking, she's talking, say, see him. See him. <laughs> see him. Thank God, say, I marry you. If I, you, you are aware that when you were coming from my hand in marriage, other men, they, are, they were also coming, be, doing better than you. Because I they manage you, and you are there listening. And the devil is feeding her and then the devil is pumping you. The devil says, are you just watching? Are you that they talk to like this? <laughs> I'm telling you, you will not know where you will raise your hand. So when you walk out, it is not weakness. It is wisdom. Praise God. Once you just, any sin at all. Once you leave that sin for one second, you have defeated the devil. Can I prophesy to five persons here? Five of you, this week, the call of God in my life will work wonders in your life this week. That's number one. Number, one. number two, the call of God in my life will give you supernatural provision this week. Number two, the call of God in my life will introduce you to somebody that matter. And that person will introduce you to another person. And that person will introduce you to another person. And that person will introduce you to another person. Jump on your feet and shout, yes! That's the end of the service. Lift up your hands and let's appreciate it. Let's give him all the praise. And give him all the glory. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name. And blessed be your name. And blessed be your name. And blessed be your name. In Jesus' name. One prayer we are praying. Lift up your hands. I refuse to be disappointed this week. Put your hands together and turn it into prayer. Yes, expectations shall be fulfilled. Expectations shall be granted. Expectations shall be granted. I refuse to be disappointed. This week, in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. One of the things, as I pray for everyone now,
that I'd like you to notice God hates disappointment with passion. He says, surely there is an end. There is an end. There is something you are expecting at the end of every day. There's something you are expecting at the end of every week. Surely there is an end. There's something you are expecting at the end of every month. Surely there is an end. There's something you are expecting at the end of every year. He said, thy expectation shall not be cut off. Can I pray for somebody here? I don't know what your expectations are for this week. In the name of Jesus, your expectations shall not be cut off. Your expectations shall not be cut off. Your expectations shall not be cut off. That you are expecting God will surprise you this week. That you are expecting God will amaze you this week. That you are expecting God will do it for you. That glory and honor shall be given to you. I pray for everyone in this thought service. Surely there is an end. Go and see a glorious end of the week. A glorious end of the week. A glorious end of the week. The week shall end well with your expectations fulfilled. If I hear your amen three times, it is confirmed. One, two, lastly, give the Lord a clap and a shout. Please take your seat.